Hi, in this particular video, we will try to get an idea about Splunk Smart Store. Okay, so we will try to understand the basic architecture of it. Then probably in later videos, we'll try to implement it in our Google Cloud. So, so to understand uh, Splunk Smart Store, let us try. Let us try to see. So let's say we we have our indexer layer, right? So it could be a single indexer or or indexer cluster as well there, right? So this is where our event comes up into the indexer, right? Either through the heavy forwarder or or the forwarders over there. But ultimately, it goes to the indexer, and indexer then it what it does is basically saves the data in its local locally, right? So while saving that we already understood and we already know like how it saves the indexed data like first it creates the hot bucket then eventually like either by the time settings or the size of the bucket settings so the hot bucket rolls to the warm bucket right and then warm bucket rolls to the cold bucket like cold data is basically those data which is not getting frequently searched right so we can store them in a into some inexpensive storage over there so that's the whole purpose of this different types of buckets splunk maintains over there so now now if i if i just show you this so so everything over here is if you see it like everything all this uh, all these buckets it's stored inside it local local storage or local cache over there right and once we are running some searches from our search it so it's basically uses this bucket to get that necessary data ne needed for our search results and then it just return back to the user over there now if you see it over here like if you are talking about a very small size Splunk deployment this is this is this particular approach would have been fine over there but gradually if you are growing and you are, and you are ingesting more and more data and your your project is moving from small to medium to large deployment over there so there will be a lot of challenges you will be facing over here like something like this one so your storage cost will go higher and higher over here because this this local local storages will cost more compared to like any other cloud provided storage there right storage solution something like s3 over there or gcs over there right so storage cost will be higher in the long run over there right second thing is like let's say in our indexer cluster one of the pair goes down when we are bringing that pair up it needs to sync all the data over there and if we have a very large volume of data it will take time so that means we are talking about a very higher time for the recovery as well when we are having peer failure as well as the same thing will also impact the data rebalancing and bucket fixing up as well right so so there is there is certain kind of challenges we will we may face a project a particular project may face when they are moving from let's say from small to medium to to a large deployment over there so to fix that so there is a there is a indexer capability splunk provides where instead of local storage we can we can store the data into cloud or let's say somewhere inexpensive storage okay it not only necessary like you will be storing this thing this thing into amazon s3 or gcs you could have your local solution as well which is very much inexpensive you, you may want to store the data over there as well okay so so what happens when this when this hot bucket rolls to the warm bucket so in this particular solution this a copy of the warm bucket will get stored in the remote storage over here okay so and and this this copy actually becomes the master copy of the warm bucket throughout this cluster over here so that means there would be some warm bucket which will be still staying at the indexer but whatever warm bucket will be getting created that warm bucket has to go to this inexpensive storage either in s3 or gcs or or a locally available at your organization level right so so that should be there now 
what happened like if i if i just keep all this warm bucket over here as well as over here that does not make any sense there right so that means we need we need basically a calculative way to keep only those warm buckets which are necessary for our searches over here right so that work is done by so so, the, so that work is, has been done by our cache manager so this is this is another component which resides at the indexer level which manages this stuff like which warm bucket will be present at the indexer cache level or which warm bucket is actually present in that remote storage from where in, it needs to fetch so every every action of these things is managed by this cache manager so this is an important component in splunk smart store okay so this solution is nothing but the splunk smart store solution and cache manager plays a very important role in smart store solution so how it how it determines like which warm bucket needs to be present in the indexer layer or which needs to be present in the remote storage so it does that based on two things so it basically calculates like which buckets is currently participating in a search and it also calculates the probability or likelihood of a particular bucket which may participate in the future searches as well okay so basically like it mainly concentrated on the most most recent indexed data index data over here which basically from hot data the, those warm buckets are getting created over there right so it basically concentrate on that part over there so this is how it determines and keep those warm buckets at the indexer cache and as well as like when it identifies like the likelihood of that particular bucket of participating in the search is very very less it is actually evicts those buckets from the indexer cache keep indexer cache over here anyway we have a copy of that bucket over here in our remote storage over there right and let's say in future in any of the bucket which we need for our search let's we are running a long long time range search over there for which we need a bucket which is not present in our cache over here so it will copy that particular bucket from here to here here over here okay so that's the stuff actually done by the cache manager and and all the warm buckets as i said like which resides in our remote storage will be the master copy over here which makes sense over here because anyway this warm buckets will have a limited time span in our indexer cache over here right so somewhere we have to maintain the master copy and that is our remote storage over here now it is the job of the remote storage to have your high to basically achieve the high availability of data like through backups or something over here okay so but the main purpose is this remote storage should be inexpensive so that your long run cost of local storage is getting minimized as well as you are getting a lot of other benefits like the slow like the less recovery time from the peer failure or something like that right so now if you see it like in this design there is no need of cold cold bucket over here right so there is no need of cold bucket over here why because anyway our data which is basically our warm buckets are already stored in the inexpensive remote storage right so we do not need the cold bucket over here so in splunk smart store there is no concept of cold bucket but it could be there if you are migrating from let's say your index which is not smart store enabled index to a smart store enabled index and for that index if we have some kind of cold bucket it will still be there but in normal cases like if you are starting with a smart store enabled index so there will be no cold bucket created over there so only we have the hot bucket and the warm bucket and from the warm bucket will directly go to the freeze over here okay so instead of that cold bucket it basically maintains a metadata file so this metadata file actually it has having all the necessary information of the buckets of the of the warm buckets which we have in our remote storage area over there okay so that it, it can easily fetch those buckets over here so that means in in a smart store in a smart store enabled environment enable index basically i should say because the smart store you can enable at the index level like not you, you can choose like not to enable the smart store for all the indexes you can selectively do this one 
so in a smart store enable index in our local storage or local cache so we are having only three kinds of files like hot bucket warm bucket which are currently participating in the search or have highly high likelihood of participating in the future searches those warm buckets and some metadata files which have the information about the warm buckets in our remote storage area over here okay and if this this thing are managed by our cache manager over here so what happens when we are talking about indexer cluster right so when we have this kind of scenario the cluster maintains only the hot bucket copy of our replication factor and the search vector copies over here it maintains only the hot bucket copy okay and our peer nodes in indexer cluster only replicates the metadata if you see it like the amount of data it replicates is very very less compared to like if you have full things in your local storage over here right so that means when we are adding a new peer or basically recovering from a fa peer failure the failure time is basically the recovery time is very very less over here because it needs to sync lesser amount of data over here correct and as i said like failure of the number of peers greater than replication factor as well we will not lose any kind of warm bucket because of this solution solution over here right because our warm buckets are stored in the in a remote storage over there so this is this is how the whole splunk smart store architecture looks like so if we just talk about like briefly about the advantages of it like it has reduced storage cost definitely it has the high availability of the data now that depends fully on the remote storage you will be using so that that one needs to make sure the high availability of the data as well so there is a dependency on that solution as well okay and you can if you see it like you have now the ability of scaling the storage as well as the compute separately over here so you can you can have full control over there okay and as i said like you can configure this at the index level so you can choose like which index so you can slowly migrate all your index over there but one thing you need to make sure is when you are moving to smart store as i said like these these warm buckets not all the warm buckets are present at the cache level right so it it's only basically place the those warm buckets which are very actively participating in the searches right so that means the search range the time range you will be using for your searches should be very recent like let's say very smaller time range let's say last 24 hours or last two days something like this one based on the configuration you did for hot and warm bucket time over there right so now if you are running frequent searches which is having higher date ranges that means that will force the cache manager to copy the buckets basically the warm buckets from the remote storage to over here as well right so this may have the performance impact on your searches as well so that means what will be our when we try to decide like when we are moving to smart store so there are a couple of factors we need to first take into consideration first thing is like as i said if you are having a small deployment smaller amount of data i think local storage should be fine over there if you are moving to medium to large scale de deployment over there you can think about smart store only when your most of your searches will be using a smaller time range depends on like whatever time configuration you have from hot bucket to warm bucket rolling so if you are most of the your searches are falling in that particular time ranges you may think about the smart store solution over there that if you are running searches like most frequent searches with m like higher time ranges in that case master may not be your perfect solution over there okay so hopefully we got an idea about what splunk smart store is probably next few videos we will talk about a demo of it in in our in our google cloud platform okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video